Hi, welcome. Teresa Lusk here with Extraordinary Life. I want to talk to you today about the forgiveness issue. I've already done two prior videos on forgiveness and I just felt like this one was necessary. I'm getting a lot of feedback from you girls and, and people about how this is really opening the door to some things and, and it's a good thing. I've gotten the feedback that you are really being challenged but that you understand the importance of it and that you're ready to be free. And that's great news. I'm also getting uh, uh, messages about how certain situations seem so challenging to you that you're not really sure if you can overcome them or not. And so I want to address that a little bit. Is forgiveness really possible? Um, and, and the hindrances to forgiveness. Um, I just want to be real with you. Forgiveness is probably one of the most difficult things we will ever do in our lives. It is very difficult. There's something about an offense that just sinks so deep. Uh, even the Word of God talks about how forgiveness is really difficult um, and that when one's offended, it's hard to get them to break down from that. So I just want to talk to you about some things that might be a hindrance to the forgiveness that you would like to experience. Um, first of all, um, I want to start off by just praying for you and just asking the Lord to open up your heart. One of the things that will keep you from receiving this training as truth is a hardened heart. And a lot of us have such a hardened heart because of the offenses that have been done against us. <clears throat> and I want you to be free from that. But nobody can, nobody can get you there except for you. That's between you and God. Um, but I want to pray that your heart is prepared, that you open up. Maybe this will just begin to crack the door open a little bit for you so that you can be free. So right now I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that every person that's watching, that they would be softened, that their heart would be softened, that they would receive. I pray that you give them revelation even deeper than what I speak of right here, God, that you take them beyond what I can present to them, Lord, because truth and freedom come from you and you alone. So in the name of Jesus, I invite you, Holy Spirit, to have your way with every person that's watching, male or female, young and old, God, no matter where they are in life, I pray in the name of Jesus that your mighty hand be upon them and that they would be set free from the things that they think they cannot be free from. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is forgiveness as a justification. A lot of times people justify their behavior and it makes it really difficult for you to forgive. So if you want to say, well, is this, you know, is forgiveness really possible? Well, sometimes you're going to have people justify their behavior and that's not going to be simple and it's certainly not going to help you reach the forgiveness process but people do justify their behavior now as i say that i also want to challenge you and say that sometimes we um, justify our own behavior it's not just people that have offended us it's us also who will justify the behavior, the action, the reaction, whatever it may be. And so, so as far as like uh, saying, well, can, can this be a, 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 a hindrance? Yes, it can be if you let it be. Because the truth is most people will justify their behavior in some form or fashion. Um, another hindrance to forgiveness, and, and I want you to really pay close attention, write down notes, get your Bible if you need to, but I want you to write down notes, take and be, be pay careful attention because a lot of these I may say them to you and and you may um, you may say oh well, not me not me not me or not them not them but as you think about it more as you allow the Holy Spirit to to help you work through this you will then begin to go oh maybe so and I've said this before I'll say it again uh, so just be aware but um, apologizing to someone when they are not ready. I've said this in, in a prior video, but I want to tell you something about forgiveness. When you catch the fire for forgiveness and you just recognize how powerful it, it is that you are ready to let go, you are ready to release these people from the prison of your unforgiveness, of your pain, of, of everything that they've caused in your life. And you're excited. You're, you're like, hey, this is great. Let's get this rolling. And you begin to call people and text them and Facebook them and tell them, hey, I forgive you for what you've done to me. Well, 
not everybody's ready to get on the forgiveness train, okay? First of all, a lot of people feel easily offended that you would even bring them up in the word unforgiveness because that that um, insinuates that they have done something wrong and they're not ready to deal with that. Or, like I said at first number one, they have justified their behavior. So I want you to be excited about forgiveness and I want you to be excited about forgiving others, but I also don't want you to lack wisdom. I do think that, that it's good to talk to people and, and, and tell them that you have forgiven them at times, but, but not, that's not always the best idea it, to begin with. So before you go off and start Facebooking, messaging, sending, you know, and, and talking to people and saying, I forgive you for, please pray about it. You don't have to tell them that you forgave them if you forgave them, you know, because they, they're not the ones that were asking you to forgive them to begin with. You, most likely not. You are the one that's, that's decided to go on this journey and to forgive people so that you can be free. So don't ask people to forgive you unless the Holy Spirit directs you and says, go talk to them about this. This could open up a can of worms and it could actually make it even worse. So uh, a hindrance to forgiveness sometimes could be going to the person, talking to them, telling them you forgive them, and they having a negative reaction. It's very common. It will happen. So make sure that that is what you're supposed to do. The next thing I want you to think about uh, as far as a hindrance to forgiveness is apologizing as a mockery. Um, you may have heard this before from me. If you have, be patient. You need to hear this because a lot of times how we apologize or how people apologize to us will be the hindrance. I'm sorry that you feel that way. Well, I'm sorry that it hurt your feelings. Well, I'm sorry that that didn't work out. I'm sorry you took it that way. I'm sorry you hurt it that way. You've gotten that apology. You know what I'm talking about. You know, where people, they just, in their self-righteousness, they apologize to you like it, it's too bad that you took it wrong. And there's some truth to that because our job is supposed to be to guard our hearts. We are to guard our hearts, especially those of us who believe in the Lord, who have read his word, who understand it, and who know that we are to guard our hearts because out of it flow the issues of life is what the word of God says. So you have to protect your heart. And, and, and every time somebody says something crazy, it's not an opportunity for you to, to get that offense and stick it in your little basket of offenses. So just remember that apologies can go uh, pretty badly. Some people may just apologize to you horribly, but in that, see, in this forgiveness process, we're very focused on what other people have done to us, but we haven't thought about as much or talked about how we can actually be also the offenders. See, when you put yourself on the other side of it, you might become a little more graceful towards people who are doing things to you or who have done things to you that they shouldn't do because if somebody offended you, it's very likely that you also participated in some of their behavior by talking bad about them, by thinking badly about them, maybe spreading some, some gossip about them by, you know what I'm talking about, you know, just start thinking about it. And so apologizing carefully is very important. And I want you to learn this as somebody who's determined to grow and move in forgiveness. When you apologize to people, don't apologize only if they apologize. Apologize because you were wrong. It doesn't matter if they are wrong and if they stand right in front of your face and they're wrong and they're not willing to apologize. It doesn't matter. You apologize anyway. Well, Teresa, that's just not right. I shouldn't have to do that. When Christ said, forgive others, like, like you have been forgiven, like I have forgiven you, when God's word said it, when, when he said forgive, he did not add any stipulations to it. He didn't say forgive if they forgive you. They didn't say that. The word, excuse me, the word doesn't say that. It says forgive. There is no prerequisite to it. There's no stipulation. It just is what it is. So if you want to be the person who grows, if you want to be the person who grows out of this unforgiveness, I'll say this a lot. I am a woman who will hold you accountable. I will, I will hold you accountable. I will tell you to be responsible for you. I've been there, done it. I know how hard it is. I know it hurts. I'm sorry that it hurts you to have to do the right thing. 
but do the right thing anyway, because God's word says that if you humble yourself, he will exalt you. A lot of you have already experienced some things changing just from watching the very first video. You've, you've seen these things happen in your life and you think it's probably them, but what it really is, is you. You have chosen to take a certain position, a certain attitude. You've chosen to take the back seat. You've chosen not to always be right. You've chosen, you've chosen something that really falls in the category of humbling yourself and God exalts you. He sometimes removes those blocks. He removes the things that are still in your way. So don't forget that humbling is a huge deal. That's when I say count the cost and then pay it, count the cost and pay it. What's the cost? The cost is doing the right thing. I'm going to cost. Okay. Here's, here's, here's what it pays to do the right thing. Here's what it pays not to do the right thing. I don't know about you, but I'm, I would rather pay the price to do the right thing. And that price hurts. It hurts to be the one to humble yourself, to not be right, to, to be uh, treated badly, even when, you know, while you're apologizing and they're mistreating you, sometimes it will hurt like nothing ever before. But in the end, the reward is greater than remaining in your unforgiveness. I challenge you to consider that and do it. I challenge you to consider it because I trust that you have probably already done it the opposite way all your life. And I'm, I, and I want to ask you, think about your situations and tell me, is there anything that has changed? Because in that attitude is the same attitude that you've probably had from the time you picked up the offense with the people or what have you. And has anything changed for the better remaining in the attitude that you're in? The answer is probably no. So try it God's way. I'm saying turn it in for you, you know, turn in your way for God's way. And let's see what happens. All right. So moving along, um, choosing to replace situations in your head that is going to hinder you. I said this before, and I'm going to say it again, because I think that sometimes we, 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 we will go through a list of all the offenses that we have in our hearts and the easy ones will we let go the harder ones we replay over and over again and over and over again. And I understand how hard it is, but a hindrance to your forgiveness will be to continue replaying those things in your head that you are supposed to guard your mind from turn them off. When they come at you say no in the name of Jesus. No. Father, I thank you that I, I am forgiving these people, that they are going to be blessed, that there will be peace between them and I, or whatever the, whatever the situation requires for as far as the prayer goes. But refuse to let that arrow that the enemy is looking for a place to land. Refuse that arrow, okay? Stop replaying the thoughts in your mind. They're not worth it. It is an attack of the enemy, <clears throat> and it is a, a, a weakness of the flesh, that, that same desire of the carnal world, of, of your, your natural person that wants to feed into the things of this world. But God said, if you, if you, you need to walk by the Spirit. And walking by the Spirit means doing things according to His Word. Okay. Gossiping about them. I also mentioned this in a previous video, and I just I feel like I need to remind you all of it. You know, just like you replay it in your head, you replay it out of your mouth to other people. Stop. You've got to stop. Make sure you're not talking to people about the events that so-and-so and them and, and her and him and them. It's, stop. You got to stop. Gossip is very divisive. It's not of, it's not of God. And it really does just, uh, it, 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 um, it promotes the kingdom of darkness. So put a stop to it. When you're truly at a point where you say, well, okay, I'm ready to forgive, then you begin to make choices and you begin to say, as much as I want to talk about this to her, to him, I'm not. And that is a sign of maturity. That's when I can say to you, hey, you, you chose not to speak. You just showed me that your that wisdom is operating in your life. That's a sign of maturity. How about repetitive offenders? You know, this is the hardest, one of the hardest parts of forgiveness is the repetitive offender. Um, there's a couple of things that you can do and not do. So first of all, if it's your spouse and you know that you're just, you're stuck where you are and there's nothing you can do about it, you know, they're going to keep doing and you're choosing, and you know that you've chosen to stay in the situation and that's, you know, that's, that's, that's your option. 
<clears throat> for whatever reason, then you're going to have to choose how you handle what they do. You have to make a decision about their behavior. You know, do you, maybe you're, maybe you have to ask yourself, am I in any way contributing to their behavior? Am I allowing it in any way? Am I, am I just letting them do uh, to me something that I don't find okay, but I'm letting it continue to go on. You have to set certain boundaries. You know what I mean? You have to set certain, certain boundaries in your life and not let people just do what they want just because they can. But at the same time, you know that sometimes you can't force people to do what you need them to do or what they should be doing on their own without somebody telling them. And so you're going to have to change your mind on how you see the situation and what you do. And here is where you will see a change. Again, I say this, if you humble yourself first and begin to do the right thing, even when you feel like doing the wrong thing, you know, if the person really makes you upset and so you, um, you, you hold back on things that they, that they enjoy from you, that they benefit from you, whether it be cooking, cleaning, whether it be anything, anything that may be where you need to start turning things around because you know, the two things do not make a right. So make sure that whatever you do with these repeat offenders, it starts with you changing your mind on how you're going to handle it. If you decide that you're going to handle it differently, you'll, you, you are very likely to see a change, but you're going to have to trust it and do it. And that is the hard part. But with repeat offenders, if you have a, if you have the same common typical reaction to your repeat offender, you will probably continue in that cycle and state of unforgiveness because they already do a certain thing and you already have the normal reaction to it. I said to someone not too long ago, here's your cycle. They do this, you do that. They do this, you do that. They do this, you do that. You have cycles. If you pay attention and you, you really begin to think, okay, what are, what are their behaviors and what are my cycles? If you can identify your cycle, we already know what theirs are because you, you have those down packed. But if you begin to ask yourself, what are my cycles? What are my reactions? What are my responses? What are my words? What are my actions? When they behave the way that they do, then you can identify it and break it and change it. But it takes you to do it not them they're not watching this video they're not the ones who are ready to forgive they're not the ones who are ready to stop doing what they're doing but if you want your situation to change then you start off with all the things that you know how to do so that whenever it, god forbid but if the day comes where you say i'm done i'm done i'm done you can say but i did everything and so that's really important think about that and um and uh, live it out practice it <clears throat> I, all, I, I say this, do you want to be right or do you want to be exalted? I mean that again, because when you humble yourself, God will exalt you. What does that mean? He's going to defend you. He's going to vindicate you and he's going to justify you. It may not happen right in the day that you want him to do it, but it will happen. And it happens when we first submit to God, resist the enemy, and then he flees. Okay. That's what the word says. That's how you resist the enemy. You, you submit to God first and we submit to God by doing what he would want us to do, not by what we would want us to do. Again, I've said, um, a, a, an expectation that's not being fulfilled will definitely uh, be a hindrance to unforgiveness. Uh, just remember, go back to those expectations. Okay. Do I have an expectation of this? Do I have an expectation of that? Are they realistic? Are they not? And if they are realistic, is there anything I can do to change that? And if the answer is no, because you can't force the other person to do, then change what cha change how you react. Again, it goes back to um, the cycle. Okay. Um, here's another hindrance to to forgiveness is um, that you have people's intentions misconstrued. A lot of times we think something of someone. And it's not always true. And I want to challenge you in that area because a lot of times people do things over and over again to prove how off the, off the wall they are, or how obnoxious they can be, or how, how, it, how arrogant, how abusive, how whatever. Okay. People usually have certain things in their character that they will just 
practice, 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 even if it's negative. And, but, but sometimes because of that, we might even uh, mislabel someone's intentions and then remain in an attitude of unforgiveness. So I, I need you to ask yourself, is there something that someone is doing that might could possibly be misunderstood by you? It's not always the offender. Remember, it's not always the offender. We are able, very able to get offended. We're very able to get frustrated. We're very able to be just as broken as they are. So I need to ask you, go back and think about the people. And could you possibly um, have a misunderstanding of their intentions towards you? It is possible that a lot of the things that they do, they do it on purpose. But it's also possible that because they've done so many things on purpose, that they, they at one or two points, at some point, did something that was not on purpose, and yet you took it that way because that's their history. See, when you begin to tear down the lies of the enemy, you are able to see things a lot more clearly. And this is one of those things that you have to be clear about. So ask yourself, and don't just ask yourself, ask the Holy Spirit, because that is who is going to lead us into the truth. He's going to, to bring to truth, no, yes, this, etc. okay? <clears throat> um, you, your determination that they must stop doing what they're doing before you stop. That kind of goes with, I, with what I spoke er, about earlier, um, that if you're determined that you're not going to stop doing what, what, you, what, that, that, you know, that until they stop, then you'll turn around and forgive them. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Decide if you're going to be free or not. If you're not going to be free, then what, what's the point? You know, why, why watch these videos? Why read the, the assignments that I give you? Why do any of that? You know, God wants you to be obedient because you love him, not for any other reason, not because somebody else is doing what they should do. I used to get very upset because early in, in my marriage, my husband and I used to have to go to, to uh, counseling very early in our marriage. And uh, we had a pastor who was, he was really good, but I was very strong-willed and I was very vocal. And I was the one that was willing to tell you everything that I was thinking. And my husband was very quiet. And so I would get in trouble for, for of course, for speaking up and, you know, and, and, you know, I would be the one that was that seemed like I was the troublemaker, but I would want him to stop doing what he was doing before I would. And I just realized it just doesn't work that way. It took me a long time to realize it. And I went through a lot of heartache and headaches and frustration. And there was, you know, frustration in our marriage because I wasn't willing to humble myself. And um, I thank God that my husband really was able to do this before I was. He really was. And, and that really helped me, but it doesn't always work that way. And so, and, and now, you know, I realize that regardless of who's doing what, we are both expected to do the right thing. And we don't have to wait for somebody else to be doing the right thing first. Just do the right thing. You'll find so much more peace. And sometimes you'll find it just like this. So I challenge you to do that. Sometimes to leave the, the, the only option in your life, and I am not saying this, especially not to marriages, because I, like I said, I don't compromise the word of God, and there are very few um, provisions there for, for divorce, things of that nature. But there are certain situations that you, you know are not healthy for you that you can leave. So I'm, again, not talking about marriages so much, although that is something you'll have to work out in counseling with your pastor, etc. But there are some situations. It could be a job situation. It could be a friendship. It could be, it could be anything. It could be a relationship where you're not married and you're with someone and they're just not good for you. And, and it keeps you in a, in a, in just a cycle of unforgiveness because there's so much hurt and so much chaos and so much division. You know, those, sometimes you just have to choose. There is no, let me just, um, do the right thing and forgive. Sometimes you have to leave certain environments and situations and that is your answer. But when you leave, unfortunately you take all these emotions with you. And so be sure that you deal with those. Because leaving isn't always going to be the solution, but if you leave a certain situation where, again, a friendship, a, um, a relationship, 
whatever it may be, a job situation, you still need to deal with any unforgiveness that you might have. Um, <clears throat> now, here's what I'm going to say. There are some very difficult situations that arise in our lives. A lot of us have been victims of sexual abuse, of, of, uh, of watching other people abuse others, young, children, um, and so on, and abandonment, rejection, some, some things that are so deep and hurtful. And you go, well, Teresa, I truly do not know how I can overcome this. I've tried. I just don't know. And, and the truth is that there, I don't have a, an answer to you to how you can fully forgive because it's you, it's your will, it's your experience, it's, it's between you and God. But I can say that, that I have been through some very unforgettable situations and I have been able to forgive them, but it took all of me. It took all of me deciding that I was going to move forward. And so there are some times when people say, well, you know, unless this and this happens, then I'll go ahead and, and, and move forward. Sometimes when you've been through the deepest, darkest situations, you want somebody to come and justify why they did what they did, explain why they did what they did, to ask you for forgiveness for what they did. And that's just not realistic. Some people who hurt you are not even around this earth anymore. They've gone uh, to be with the Lord or, you know, maybe maybe they've disappeared from your life. You don't know where they are. And a lot of times we really, really want that that person to come back and say, I'm sorry, I hurt you. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you. I'm sorry that I made this action, that I abandoned you, that I called you these names, that I didn't hold you, that I didn't look at you. You know, I mean, there's tons of things. I'm sorry that I didn't call the cops to protect you. There are so many things that you could be hurting from and you're, you're dealing with the hardest situations and you're saying, but Teresa, that's great. That's great for those easy things. But what about the really hard things? And again, the answer is the same that I gave for the easier things. It's that you have to want to forgive. And, that, and I have to ask you this. There's two different kinds of wants, okay? There's a want of, okay, I'll forgive because God told me to, so I'll just do that. Or is there a want to forgive that includes, I'll do it because God told me to, and I'll do it because I want to. You see the difference? You can do it because God said so. And you know, truly, I'm not, I'm not condemning you on that. There's a lot of us who do things only because God said so. I've, I've been there and there are some things that I still will have to do in my life just because God said so, not because I want to. But when it comes to forgiveness, that is such a big issue in life. And so I want to not just please God, but I want to also be there where every time somebody offends me, I want to want to forgive. I want to be there where my option is never to stay in unforgiveness. When something happens in my life, I know that there is no other option except for forgiveness. And I get to it like this because the longer I sit on it, the, the, the greater it grows. It will grow. There's no doubt about that. It will grow. So I ask you, which are you in? Do you just want to forgive just because you know you've read the word of God? It says you better forgive. Or is it is it because you want to and because you want to please God? If you're not in the second category, just pray about it. Say, Lord, give me that heart. Give me that heart of compassion to want to forgive immediately and to do it. And you just work at it. It's a process. So the things, how to forgive the unforgettable is the same process. We will to forgive it. We, we pour our hearts out to God as if, as if you're reliving the whole thing. I believe in just sometimes just pouring your heart out to God, telling them how you, how, how you felt failed and abandoned and how, how these people hurt you, how you've never been justified or vindicated by it. I mean, pour your heart out. And then decide again, decide that you'll leave it in God's hands, decide that you'll bless them, decide that those things will not continue to come out of your mouth, that you won't continue to replay them in your head. Decide that if you, if, if you never saw these people again, they will not determine if you forgive or not. You got to give up the idea that the only way to forgive such a big situation is if these people come to you and say, I failed you. But I do have to say this, a lot of times people who are supposed to be in our lives to mentor us, to, 
to lead us to Christ and closer to God, whether it be in church or our, our circles of faith, friends, etc. A lot of times they don't understand the deep hurts that we've been through. And I had um, gone out to share my testimony for many years. I had been, been sharing it for several years, not many, but several years. And I would share my testimony about being sexually abused. And people would come up to me at the end and they would say, well, what a great testimony. Thank you for sharing. This is so great that you, that you shared this, <clears throat> etc." But one day a woman came up to me afterwards and she said, Teresa, she said, I am sorry that that happened to you. And she caught me off guard because I was not expecting her to say anything like that. I wasn't expecting anybody to say that to me ever. I didn't, I don't think that the offenders would ever come and say, I'm sorry. And I wasn't expecting it. But when the woman said it, it released me. I cried. I mean, I literally just cried. I, th I said, oh my gosh, I'm sitting here sharing my testimony so that people can be free and, and, and so they can be helped. And here comes this woman who understood the power of the I'm sorry from somebody else, even if it wasn't the offender. She knew that saying I'm sorry would set me free to a certain degree. And she, and she said it and it set me free to a, to, it set me free, period. Because nobody had ever said that they're sorry to me for that kind of pain. And I learned a big lesson that day. And if you see me posting, like if, if, you, if you're following this through the Facebook group, if you see that, you'll see me, you'll see me say, I am sorry that you're going through what you're going through, that you went through what you went through when we're talking about forgiveness and, and, and deep issues of life, because I know the power of that word. And I don't just say it to say it. I mean it with all my heart because I know the power that it has to help me, that, that it helped me to be free. So I know what power it'll have for you. And so I want to say to you who's watching, and don't take this lightly just because it's a video. See, God can, can penetrate, saturate, and infiltrate anything. And so in the name of Jesus, I say to you that I am sorry for all the pain that you have had to go through, for all the pain that you've endured, for all the pain that people put you through, the shame, the embarrassment, the abandonment, the injustice, the, the rejection, the taking a, 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 a advantage of your body when you were a little person, now that you're an adult, for those not caring for you the way that they should, not protecting you how they should, for those who had a voice and didn't raise it for you, for every single injustice that's ever been done to you from the time you were a little child to right now, I, I, I am sorry and I pray in the name of Jesus that this apology on behalf of those who were broken and insulted you and hurt you, that it will still penetrate, that the love of God right now in the name of Jesus, that the love of God will still saturate, penetrate, and infiltrate your heart right where you are right now. Receive it. Just receive his love right now. The Holy Spirit knows. He knows who's, he knows who's weeping within. He knows who's weeping without. So receive it. Let his love embrace you. Mourn it out. I tell people, when you're hurting deeply, cry it out, mourn it out. Have you mourned it out? If not, this is the time to mourn it out. This is the time to let the Holy Spirit embrace you with the love of a father, with the love of a mother, with comfort, and, and just refilling you in those areas that you find yourself lacking. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, I pray that this person who's watching, that they will feel your love, a tangible presence right now in the name of Jesus, restoring them from their hurt and from their pain. Father, release them from the grip that keeps them from being set free, whether it be by their will, by their heart, by their ideas, whatever it is, Lord, set them free. And we thank you for this, Lord. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name.